In today's video, I'm going to take you to visit the Shanxi History Museum. It's the place you shouldn't skip during your visit to China. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. I'm at home. Earlier this year, I went to Shanxi History Museum while I was in Xi'an. But it's not allowed to take a mask in the museum because it's a indoor public space. So I'll talk to you guys from home. If you plan to visit Xi'an, of course, the first thing on your list is the Terracotta Warriors Museum. The second thing I would highly recommend you to visit is the Shanxi History Museum. It's a place where you can look into China's past. In today's video, I'll show you many fun relics from the museum. In addition, I'll briefly walk you through the 2000 years of history when Xi'an and Luoyang were rotating to be the capital of China. I have a video about the Luoyang Museum. I'll put the link in the description box. Since I can't cover everything from Shanxi History Museum, in today's video, I only covered the types of relics I didn't cover in the Luoyang Museum. Part 1, The Zhou Dynasty Highlight, a rigorous ritual system related to hierarchy. The exhibition starts from prehistory times, but I'll just start from the Zhou Dynasty. The early Zhou capital was in Qiyi, in the west of the Guanzhong Plain. In the 11th century BC, King Wen of Zhou moved the Zhou capital eastward here, about 25 kilometers southwest from present-day Xi'an. Decades later, the Duke of Zhou built a second settlement at Luoyi, present-day Luoyang, in order to reinforce control of the eastern part of the kingdom. The majority relics from the Zhou dynasty are ritual bronzes, which I've covered in the Luoyang Museum. Some of the bronze vessels in the Shanxi Museum are very unique in shape, such as this dragon-like one and this oaks. The characters on the vessels are important records of history. These are Ding and Gui. In the Zhou Dynasty, a ritual system named the Li was established. It's a very complicated system, mainly about the manners as an expression of the social hierarchy and ethics. In terms of Ding and Gui, there were different combinations for people from different social hierarchy. The king is entitled with nine dings and eight guis, dukes seven dings and six guis, so on and so forth. Archaeologists could judge the rank of the honor of the tomb by the number of dings and guis found in the tomb. Part 2. State Qing Highlight The Determination to Reform when the Zhou dynasty was established, the conquered land was given to Zhou relatives and ministers as hereditary fiefs that eventually became powerful in their own right. Qing was one of them, located in the westernmost of the country. In the 8th century BC, the Zhou capital was raised by the nomads. All the royal buildings in the settlement were burnt to the ground. The newly enthroned king had no choice but to move the capital east to Luoyang. The event marked the end of the Western Zhou Dynasty. Historians named the second phase of the Zhou Dynasty Eastern Zhou. After the king of Zhou moved to Luoyang, Qing gradually moved from present-day Gansu province eastward and occupied the Guanzhong Plain. In early times, its capital was in the west of the Guanzhong Plain, not far away from the early capital of the Zhou Dynasty. This stone found near the early capital of State Qing was inscribed with the hunting events of the king. The characters on it were among the earliest Chinese characters. According to history book, there were ten stones like this, but now only one remains. The Eastern Zhou was characterized by an accelerating collapse of royal authority and conquering of small states by big states. In the second phase of the Eastern Zhou dynasty, which was named the Warren State Periods, seven major states, including State Qin, left. In the 4th century BC, the State Qin shifted capital to Yueyang, near the present-day Xi'an. 
The reason to shift capital was because the king of Stating wanted to reform, but he encountered a strong resistance from aristocrats in old capital. So he moved capital to a new place where he implemented his reforms. Soon, people realized that they would have better lives, such as paying less tax in the new capital. So more and more people moved to the new capital, and the aristocrats in the old capital lost power. Many years later, after the crown prince succeeded his father as the new king, he implemented a series of more thorough reforms, after which state Qin rose to be a powerful state. After reforms, the army of State Qin became very powerful. Now this army is even world famous because of terracotta warriors. In this part of exhibition, you can focus on the weapons of State Qin, which was the first class among the peers. This is a crossbow, a weapon similar to bow but with an elastic launching device. This is a fu. In ancient China, a fu was a tally and was used by a king to command and dispatch the army. This fu is in the shape of a tiger. The tiger fu consists of two pieces like this. The characters on the fu are the description of how to use it. The right piece was retained in the hands of the king while the left piece was issued to the local commanders. If someone wanted to dispatch the troops from a certain area, he had to show the right piece of the tiger tally. Both pieces of the tally had to match each other. There is a notch on the other side of the fu. If the other piece clicks with this piece, then the authenticity of the other piece is proved. Part 3. The Qing Dynasty Highlight Unification of China in 221 BC, Emperor Shi Huang conquered the other six states and unified China. State Qin became the Qin Dynasty. There is a map in this hall that displays the territory of the Qin Dynasty. Emperor Shi Huang abolished the decentralized system that Zhou Dynasty adopted and established a centralized government. He divided the country into 36 commanderies. This is a weight that the Qin Dynasty used to standardize the weight in the country. In the year that Emperor Shi Huang unified China, it was sent to the capital to be re-standardized and then sent back to the place where it was from. This is how the empire standardized the measurements across the country. There are different weights like this on display in the museum. According to history book, after Emperor Shi Huang unified China, he confiscated all weapons in the country and melted copper into a huge musical instrument. Some archaeologists believe these two gigantic winding dragons could be the bottom of that musical instrument. It looks like there was a post connected to the dragon bottom through this big hole. Of course, there are terracotta warrior figures in this play in this hall. If you are interested, I have a video film in the Terracotta Warriors Museum introducing the histories and stories behind these figures in detail. The link is in the description box. Do you remember this figure? It's him. Hi boys. Part 4. The Han Dynasty Highlight the open of the Silk Road. The Qin Dynasty was a short sleeved dynasty. Soon there were uprisings around the country. In last week's video at Hangu Pass. The most famous thing about Hangu Pass was an agreement. In late Qin Dynasty, when there were many uprisings in China, there was an agreement among generals. Whoever breaks into the Hangu Pass becomes the new king. Liu Bang, who broke into the Hangu Pass and the capital of the Qin Dynasty, later on established the Han Dynasty. He initially chose Luoyang as the capital, but his advisor suggested that Guangzhou Plain was a better choice due to its location. So Xi'an continued to be the capital of China. It was called Chang'an. 
From these figures, we could know how people in the Han Dynasty dressed alike. Instead of sitting, people in the Han Dynasty knelt down and sat on their lower legs. These funeral goods depict the scene of everyday life in the Han Dynasty. These are Eve's tiles. They're small accessories from classical Chinese architecture fixed at the end of the rafters for decoration and for shielding the eaves from wind and rain. They went from plain surface to decorative patterns and reached their zenith during the Han Dynasty. This is my favorite one because of the characters on it. Chang Le Wei Yang. It means everlasting happiness that will never cease. The palace of the Han Dynasty was named the Wei Yang Palace. I'm wearing Eve's Tile style earrings. This one is the Chang Le Wei Yang. And homework. Look for the other one in the museum when you visit it. It's a deer. Deer was also an auspicious image in ancient China. This set is the four deities. There are the green dragon, white tiger, rose finch, and black tortoise. During the Han Dynasty, they were worshipped as supernatural beings representing four seasons and guarding the four sides. This is a goose lamp and it's environmental friendly. The fume generated from burning of oil would be guided into the belly of the goose from the neck. The belly of the goose is filled with water and the smoke would dissolve in the water. This is gold from Han Dynasty. The left one is in the shape of horseshoe, which is relatively rare. It was used as reward from the emperor or gift to other countries. This is a golden silkworm. Chinese had a long history of making silk. There is also a piece of silk from the Han Dynasty in this play. Actually, the beginning of the Silk Road dates back to the Han Dynasty in around 114 BC. The initial purpose was not to build a trade route, but to obtain aliens in Central Asia against the Xiongnu, who often invaded the northern frontiers of the Han Dynasty. In early Han Dynasty, the imperial court did not have the resource to fight against Xiongnu. They sent princesses to Xiongnu to form marriage aliens. Starting from the fifth emperor, Emperor Wu, the Han Empire changed from relatively passive foreign policy to an offensive strategy. An envoy called Zhang Qian was sent to find the aliens in Central Asia, where he visited many countries. After the Han Dynasty won the wars against the Xiongnu and the Hexi Corridor was pacified, a trade route was opened. Han Chinese, which makes the majority of the Chinese people, derived the name from the Han Dynasty. Similar to the Zhou Dynasty, the Han Dynasty had two phases, the Western Han Dynasty and the Eastern Han Dynasty. The capital of the Eastern Han Dynasty was in Luoyang. I covered many relics from that period in my video Luoyang Museum. Part 5. Northern and Southern Dynasties Highlight Invasion and Integration of Nomadic People After the Eastern Han Dynasty, China went into a chaotic period. After a brief period called the Three Kingdoms, various nomadic people invaded northern China and established numerous states. Many Han Chinese had to leave their home and flee to the south where an empire was established by Han Chinese. It was a period of mass migrations, short-lived states, and constant warfare between states. A nomadic people called Xianbei in the end unified northern China and established an empire called the Northern Wei Empire. It's the empire that Mulan's story happened. The capital was initially in Datong, then was shifted to Luoyang. In this part, I only introduced this seal with 16 faces, each inscribed with different characters and was used in different occasions.
It's a 16 in 1 seal. The seal belonged to a legendary Xianbei person called Du Guxin, who connected the three different dynasties in Chinese history through marriage of his daughters. We often talk about the first lady. In some country, there is a first husband. And I always call Du Guxin the first father-in-law in ancient China. Not long after Northern Wei Empire shifted capital to Luoyang, the empire was divided into Western Wei and Northern Wei, with the Yellow River as the border. Both states were replaced by two new states established by court ministers and the respective court. Du Guxin was a minister working in the West state, with Xi'an as the capital. Three of his daughters married three important persons in the state. Daughter 1 married the king of the state. Daughter 2 and 3 married the two Han Chinese, who were key figures in the court. One was from the Yang family, another from the Li family. The son-in-law of Du Guxin from the Yang family replaced the current royal family and established the Sui dynasty. Sui later on conquered the state in the east and the empire in southern China and unified China again. But the Sui dynasty was a short-lived dynasty. It was replaced by the Tang dynasty established by Li Yuan. Who is Li Yuan? Li Yuan was the son of daughter three. Du Guxin was never an emperor. But in over 300 years, all Chinese emperors were his descendants. And he was a Xianbei. I have three videos about the Northern Wei Empire and the Xianbei people, which could serve as the background of the story. Part 6. The Tang Dynasty Highlight An International Empire The biggest collection of the relic from the Tang Dynasty were funeral figures, especially the tricolor ceramic figures. If you think this woman are too fat, then you don't understand aesthetics of the Tang Dynasty. These were their beauty queens. I really love these two dresses. Can you find face powder and the blush here? I've covered the funeral figures of the Tang Dynasty in Luoyang Museum, so today I'll show you other relics from the Tang Dynasty. In the museum, there is a map of Chang'an during the Tang Dynasty on top of the map of present-day Xi'an so people could connect the past with the present. Chang'an was the capital of the Tang Dynasty and was the largest city in the world at that time. During the same time in the West, a big city was Constantinople. Chang'an was about seven times the size of Constantinople, six times the size of Rome, and 1.5 times the size of Beijing during the Ming and Qing dynasty. The city was like a chessboard, with people from different work of life living in different squares. There were also squares for foreigners to live. Foreigners brought foreign culture and products, such as the agate and these glass vessels. This is a golden lotus bowl. Lotus was a symbol in Buddhism in ancient India. This is a silver sachet. In the Tang Dynasty, silver sachets were popular among royal ladies. They were used as a perfume. The outer globe is hollowed out with patterns of flowers and birds. The patterns were inspired by elements from Central Asia. There is a half globe inside to hold perfumes. It's connected with the outer globe with silver rivets. No matter how the sachet is placed, the interior globe would always stay in horizontal position, so the perfumes inside would not be thrown out. After the Tang Dynasty, Beijing gradually came into the spotlight. It was occupied by nomadic people in the 10th century. Then it became the capital for nomadic conquering empires, the Khitan Empire, the Jurchen-led Jin Empire, and the Mongol-led Yuan Empire. In the 14th century, Beijing became the capital of Ming Empire, and then there was the Forbidden City, the Great War, and all other things you know about Beijing. 
So if you would like to know the Chinese history of the most recent 600 years, go visit Beijing. And if you are interested in the history more than a thousand years ago, visit Xi'an and visit Shanxi History Museum in Xi'an. This video marks the end of my series in the Yellow River region. In next week's video, I'm going to the Yangtze River region and will worship an ancient poet whom the origin of the dragon boat races could be traced to. I'm Yan Yan. I upload a video every Saturday about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next week in Yicheng.